There are two doors that uh, they both have two paradises behind them. And there's one door that has two hellfires behind it. Okay, so just imagine with me, there are two doors. If you open these two doors, you enter to a paradise. And then after this paradise, there's another paradise. And there's one door that if you open it, you go into hellfire. And after this hellfire, there's another hellfire. Okay? You will immediately know exactly what I'm talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the, in the Quran وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written on us that we don't worship anything besides Allah, Allah right? And then what's next? وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Which means like you be nice and grateful to your parents, right? Sayyidina Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه was once sitting and if you guys want to understand what's wabil walidayni ihsana, you need to listen to this. Sayyidina Abu Rayra was once sitting, and his mom called him from far away. She said, Ya Abu Huraira! And he said, Labbaiki! She's calling him, he's like, Ya Abu Huraira! And he said, Yes, mom! And then he's like, Oh my goodness, I raised my voice over the voice of my mom, even though he was just answering her but his voice was higher to the voice of his mother so he thought this is a sin this is a big mistake so he sat down and started making a safar how i raised my voice over the voice of my mom and then he walked he went to the market and he donated some money just asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him for raising his voice over the voice of his mom the Nabi Sallallahu was in al Medina, right? And people from all over the world, the Muslims from all, all over the world, they migrated to al Medina just to be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a man from al Yemen, from the capital of al Yemen, Sana'a, he came to al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the way from al Yemen. And you guys know at the time there were no uh, airplanes. So for you to travel from Al Yemen to Saudi Arabia, it takes you days, weeks, and, and maybe months traveling on a camel. And you want it to migrate to be with the Prophet Sallallahu which is a great thing, right? And once he arrived in Medina, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him salam. And uh, why are you here for? He said, I'm, I'm here to be with you, uh, Rasulullah. He said, Ah, oh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very good noah. He said, is your mom alive? He said, yes. He said, go sit with her. Get back all the way to Yemen and go sit with your mom, help her. Which means that the paradise is there. It's not here. The paradise is with your mom, not with the prophet. Yes, yes. It's a big thing. Obeying, going, obeying your mother, sitting with her, helping her, it's even better than being with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the big scholars of Islam, his name is uh, Haywa ibn Shuraih. He was once sitting in the mosque and giving a lecture and he has a lot of students. They're all sitting in front of him and you know like with a big famous scientist or scholar sitting in a chair and all his students sitting in front of him taking notes. And he was giving the lecture and, and the mother of uh, Haywa is, she's an old lady. So you guys know like the very old ladies, sometimes they ask for things that are not very important or maybe doesn't make a lot of sense to us. So his mom came and she looked from the window of the masjid. She said, uh, Haywa! She said, yes mom, in front of all the students. She said, go take the food and feed the chicken. She's raising some chicken. And she wants him to, she came all the way from the house to the masjid instead of like feeding the chicken her, herself. What did Haywa say? He said, teaching you guys is an afila, is a sunnah. Something good, but sunnah. Obeying my mom is what? It's fard. It's obligation on us. It's not something optional. It's not something that we do when, we're, when we have time. It's something that's major in Islam. So he left the dars, 
went all the way to feed the chicken and then all the way back to continue the dars. Imagine. Imagine. So, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ When أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَهُمَا When one of them or both get older. When you are alive, إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Okay? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He said, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ He didn't say, don't shout at them. He didn't say, don't yell in your mother's face. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking about this level aslam. He's talking about much, much less level. Imagine your mom sitting in her bedroom. Okay, and she calls you, Muhammad, could you get me some water from the kitchen downstairs? All right, mom. You go on the stairs, you get your mom a cup of water. And you go up. He's like, oh, I forgot. I need uh, some chocolate from the counter down there. He's like, okay, mom. I will. And you go. And once you go up, it's like, you know, mm, if you can get me back some orange juice, that will, I, I'm, I'm really thirsty. He's like, all right, mom. And you enter the, the room, even not in front of her, and you say like, Oof. This is haram in itself. Just this oof, just this oof is a big sin, is a major sin in Islam. Even if your mom doesn't see you, yes. You can't say this, you can't do this to your parents, even if they don't, if they don't see you. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once sitting with his companion, and he said, Rahima Anf, say Ameen. They said Ameen. What's Rahima Anf? May he lose his money, may, be, may he become a loser. So when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is talking about someone and he's making dua on him, right? And think about it. Allah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mustajab al da'wah. Whenever he makes dua, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala accept, right? So he said, Rahima Anf, say Ameen. They said Ameen. He said, Rahima Anf, say Ameen. They said Ameen. He said, Rahima Anf, say Ameen. They said Ameen. Who? Man adraka abawah, ahaduhuma aw kilahuma inda al-kibar, wa lam yudkhilahi al-jannah. If someone was living with his parents, which mean like his parents didn't pass away when he was young or something, and they were not a reason for him to go to paradise because of them. You guys remember? I said two doors, right? These doors are shortcut. Shortcut to Jannah, shortcut to Hellfire. As simple as this. You disobey your parents, this is a shortcut to Hellfire. Even if you, uh, if you pray, yes, even if you pray, even if you fast the month of Ramadan, yes, even if you fast more than the month of Ramadan, Mondays, Thursdays, the day of Arafah, you do a lot of stuff, but you're not good to your parents, yes, yes, you have a question, please, no, no, it's Malik. If you what? If you tell your mom the truth and, and obey Allah. If you, t if you obey Allah and you tell your mom the truth, that's perfect. You did everything good. What's the problem? Do, do you, do, are you still going to go to hellfire? I don't get it. She means like, she means like if you disobey like oh. If you disobey Allah and you say the truth to your mom? Okay. Now you, you still have to make a step far to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive you. Let's watch this and continue. That's for you then.
Τι είναι αυτό. Μόλις τώρα στο παπατέρα σου πουργεί τι είναι αυτό. Ένα σπουργίτη είναι πατέρα. Ένα σπουργίτη. Σπουργίτη. Τι είναι αυτό. Γιατί το κάνεις αυτό το πράγμα, μπορείς να μου πεις τόσες φορές σου είπα, είναι ένα σπουργίτη. Δεν το καταλαβαίνεις. Πού πας. Δυνατά. Σήμερα ο μετρός μου γιος που πριν λίγες μέρες έκλεισε τα τρία καθόταν μαζί μου έξω στο πάρκο όταν ένα σπουργίτη ήρθε και κάθισε απέναντί μας. Ο γιος μου με ρώτησε 21 φορές τι ήταν αυτό και το απάντησε και τις 21 φορές ότι ήταν ένα σπουργίτη. Τον αγκάλιασα τρυφερά και τις 21 φορές που μου έκανε την ίδια ερώτηση, ξανά και ξανά, χωρίς να εκνευριστώ, νιώθοντας στοργή για το οθό μου αγοράκι. You guys remember when we were young, and some of us still in this phase, we ask our parents for so many things. Sometimes we ask our parents the same question over and over again. We keep telling them, Mom, why is this? And she tells us the answer, and we forget. And then again, Mom, why is this? And this man, how many times he answered his son? 21. 21 times. He asking them, what is this? And he's telling him the answer. But with so much love and so much care. This is how our parents treat us, right? And we sit and play some, uh, something on our laptop or iPad, PS3. And mom needs some help in the kitchen. And she calls you and is like, Mom, I'm playing. Not now. Is this how we treat our parents? No. I, I said in the beginning, there is two hellfires behind this door. Why did I say that? Th there was a man living with his parents, okay? And then his mom passed away. And he was old, he was, he, he was 20 something. So he was just living with his father, right? And then um, he got married, and now he lives with his wife and his father in the house. His father is, a, is an old man, like, like this, this old man. 
So he sometimes asks a lot of questions. He asks some stuff like annoys the, the family. He opens the, uh, the fridge and is like, why this food is uncovered? And he starts bothering them. And this is the time we're supposed to be patient with our parents. So the, the, the wife of the boy, she wasn't a really good person. She, she told her husband, you know, your dad is bothering us. This is too much. I can't handle this. And he tried to like, Habibti, this is my father and we should be nice to him. She's like, she couldn't, she couldn't take it anymore. She told him like, look, it's either me or your father in this house. So you choose. So he didn't know what to do. So he went to his father and he told him that, you know, the garage, there's this little room in the garage. It's for the, it was for the driver. So he told him, like, this room in the garage, it has, it has more sun, there's more, uh, more light to get into it, and why don't you go live there? And the father, the old man, understood that they, they no longer want, uh, want him in the house. So he said, fine. And then the, the wife, the bad wife, she didn't want to serve food to him in nice dishes. Because uh, sometimes, you know, an old man sometimes can't hold the dish so it, it breaks. So she doesn't want to get her plates broken. So she decided to buy this steel plate that even if it gets dropped, it doesn't break. Which is a very low quality plate. And she told the, the maid, whenever you serve food to him, serve it in this plate and leave it in his room. We bring the food to his room and, and put it in his plate. So even this plate doesn't get clean. And they almost boycott the father. So he was living in the garage all the time by himself, just alone, for two continuous years. They don't visit him. They just maybe say hi to him in the morning. And they didn't treat him well. They didn't care, like, is his clothes clean or no? Does it need to be cleaned or no? The plate is not clean. And then after two years, the old man died. He passed away. Right? So the father. So the father. Reminds me with brother Ihan. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, so after two years, the father passed away. He died. So the, the man who was like young and maybe in my age or something, and he had a son in your age, guys. So he asked his son to go help him clean the, the, the room of his father in the garage, right? So he took his son and they went to the garage and they start cleaning. And, and he brought one big trash can, like a, a plastic bag to like put everything. Khalas, he died. We don't need this stuff. So he was like grabbing the things, the clothes, everything belongs to his dad. He's putting it in, in the trash and just to throw it away. So the, the son, who was like maybe eight or nine years old, he saw the plate. So he took it and he put it like this. And the man is like, Habibi, it's dirty, put it. He said, no, I need it. I'm like, no, 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 why do you need it for? Just put it, put it in the trash. And think, what did he say? He told him, I'm keeping the plate with me, so when you get old, I'll serve the food to you in this plate. This is, that's what called, that's what called الجزاء من جنس العمل. How, the way you treat your parents, expect it to be exactly the way that your kids will treat you. And that's why I, feel, I told you, it's hellfire in this dunya. And the guy start crying. His son shocked him. He start crying and he start looking at the dirty clothes of his dad and the dirty bed that no one, no one took care of him. And, but it's very late. His dad already died. It's very late to, to listen to him or very late to be nice to him.
You're leaving, you're going out with your friends, and your dad is calling you, Habibi, don't come late. Hadar, okay. Habibi, don't come late. I'm telling you, Hadar, don't come late. Hadar. This is haram. This is big. This is big. We are not allowed to raise our voice to our parents, whatever, whatsoever. We can't do that. We can't do that. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What if you um, what if you do something very bad to your parents, like 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 you shout at them, very very like you raise your voice on them, and then after that, after that you after that you like after that you feel guilt and you're like yeah Allah astaghfirullah, and then you're like one way that's gonna make me feel better is by going to say sorry to my parents, and then you go, go say sorry. Okay, let's say it was your dad. You go, you go say sorry to your dad, and then your dad says, No, I don't want to talk to you. You yelled at me. No, leave. I don't want to talk to you. No, I'm not going to forgive you. No, no, no. Okay. What is that? You have only one option. is to keep apologizing and saying sorry to your dad until he accepts you. That's <coughs> the only option you have. You make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the first place, and you keep whatsoever. You get him a gift. You get him flowers. You get whatever. You do everything to your parents. To, uh, for them to forgive you if you do this because this is a major a major sin and um, one one of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said Ya Rasulullah man ahaqqu al-nasi bi husni sahabati you all know the hadith right so he asked in another word he asked Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah who is the best one who is the most important one that I I should give him whatever I have. If you have only half an hour left, who should I spend it to with Ya Rasulullah? If I have a little extra money and I'm, I'm buying a gift, who should I buy the gift Ya Rasulullah? If I have, if I'm very tired and I can only smile for a couple of minutes, who should I, sm who should I smile to Ya Rasulullah? And then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has friends, he has cousins, he has family, he has aunts, uncles, right? The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? Qala ummuk, your mother. And then, okay, who's next? Qala ummuk, your mother. And then he's, who's next? Qala ummuk, your mother. Three times. And then who's next? Ya Rasulullah. Qala thumma abuk. And then your father. Right? So the mother even much more because she is the one who took very good care of you. When you were young, she passed by all this pain to raise you up. I have another movie. I don't know, should I play it now or should I? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Who wants it? If there's one thing that I've learned, it's that no matter how much you plan in your life, you're always going to be surprised. It's just the way that God works. My name is Hassan and I want to share a little part of my life with you. These surprises are always there to test you, and it's how you react to them which makes you either enjoy it or regret it. Sometimes all it takes is opening a book. My story starts here, at my old high school. At this point in my life, I had plans, and I was looking forward to a life full of happiness and success. Hey Mo, how you been? Hey, what's going on man? How was life? How was school? Everything's good. Really? Doing good man. All my grades. Nice. Excellent. Top the line. Yeah, so what's up? Oh, nothing, man. Uh, my dad's getting me a new ride after uh, high school. Oh, really? What do you plan on getting? Uh, open it, man. No way, man. You're gonna get this ride? That's yeah. freaking sweet. Oh, yeah. I worked hard for four years. Yeah. Four years of my life, I'm getting this one, no matter what. Oh, you sure your dad's gonna get it for you? Oh, yeah. I deserve it. You know what? Yeah, you do, man. Well, you know what? Here he comes right now. Why don't you go work your magic? I'll catch I will, you later. man. Graduation is in one week. I know. 
I bet you're very excited about it, huh? I can't wait, Dad. Hey. So, what's the next move now? I got a full ride to U of M, and uh, then I go to school, and I need a car. You know the car that I've been talking about? Yes, I know. Yeah, I've seen that car. It's it's right there. Just make sure. But you know, Hassan, you need to appreciate other things before the car. Yeah. And you know that, right? Dad, you know, uh, time is running out, but you know, I really want my car. <laughs> um, inshallah, inshallah. Yes, Dad. Come into the library. I have something for you. I'm coming. Yes, Dad. Hassan, I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. I am so proud of you. There's no words will explain how proud I am of you. Okay? Congratulations. You, you know I worked hard all my life for this moment. I know. I know you did. But I have very special gifts for you. I think you're going to like it. Hold Thank on. you, Dad. Here you go, Hassan. Congratulations. Uh, what is this, Dad? This is a special book. It tells you about the book. No, no, all Dad. I, I worked all my you, life. I think you're going to like this. I'm Maybe. not going to like this. It's only a, a fancy Just book. Open. Just open. Uh, no, Dad. Uh, Please open. You know what I, I wanted? Please. This is what you give, give me. You need no, to understand uh, Dad, this. No, I don't need you. Limit I got yourself. my full ride. And I don't need you no more. I'm out. Hassan, hold on. Hassan. Hassan! Forget this guy, man. What's up, man? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not ready for nothing. Oh, man. Uh, remember the, the card that I told you that my dad's gonna get me? Oh, uh, he's not gonna get me. Uh, he got me a book. Yeah. No, I um, mean I, I worked. I worked so hard. I got. I got everything that he wanted: scholarships, a uh, full ride, and. Now this was a surprise. I was not ready for. I didn't go to commencement, and I didn't speak to my dad for two weeks. My dad had done some pretty unfair things, but this time I was just furious. After starting college, I got away as quickly as I could, and my father and I spoke less and less. Eventually, we didn't speak at all and we drifted apart. And I'm finished your snack, honey, okay? Why are you making a mess? Did you finish your homework today? You did? Okay, good. Now finish your snack. Your dad will be home any minute, all right? Hey, buddy. Hey, honey, I'm home. Hi. What's up, son? How was your day? Good. What's wrong? This came in today. I regret to inform you that your father passed away on July 7, 2009. As the court-appointed executor of your father's will, I need to meet with you as soon as possible to discuss some details of your father's This kind of news always takes you by surprise, because you're never ready to lose someone you love. I know I wasn't ready for this. Especially since I had lost so much time I needed to make up with my father. I obviously waited too long to make things right. When I arrived at my parents' house, the sudden weight of sadness and regret filled my heart. I had a wave of flashbacks go through my mind. 
some good and some regretful. It was in this very house that I foolishly severed ties with my father, and all I had left are his memories. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful This is the book in it is guidance sure without doubt to those who fear Allah Dear Hassan, congratulations. You earned it. Love Dad. See what I mean? Life is full of surprises. And at that point, I realized that my father was giving me exactly what I had wanted and more. Now I had no chance to thank him for it. And nor would I have a chance to apologize for what I've done. Now that I look back, I see the wisdom of my father's actions. He wanted to give me more than just a car, but also guide me with the best of guidance for the rest of my life. The car was meant to drive me to my destination, and the Holy Quran would steer me in the right direction in all aspects of my life. From that point on, I could not stop thinking about how my life would be different if I had only opened that special book.
then? Just, just little thing. Imagine if Malak, when she told her dad in the mall, Daddy, I want this. He said, no, this is too much. She's like, ooh, everything's too much. And he already got her the tab. Home, right? But he just kept it to be surprised. So imagine if she did this, she was going to take a sin, and maybe her dad would change his mind and say like, you know, this girl is not good. I'm not going to give her the tab. But just because she was nice to her father, that's what she got in return, right? Uh, Adnan? Okay. then this is something that's going to happen back and forth all the time between you and your parents sometimes they tell you you're good sometimes not the, the only thing I can tell you you have to do your best to be nice to them you have to do your best to serve them if you do anything wrong you have to go apologize to them and don't let the day go without getting them happy on you don't don't let it go right so I'm sorry, we don't have much time and I have a lot to say here. So I'll just conclude with, um, with a story. You guys know that three young men were walking and it was raining. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. So th they were walking and it was raining. So they just hid it in one of the caves. And it happened that a big rock came and, and blocked the entrance of the cave. Right? Yeah. So they were stuck in the cave, about to die. They had nothing to do. And then they decided to do what? To make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the best of their deeds. Everyone would say like the best thing he did in his life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would release the rock and get them out of this. And one of them, what did he say? He said, I was once uh, getting back home with the milk to my mom. She wanted to drink. But this night it happened to that my mom fall asleep before I reached the house. So when I got home, I went to her bed, she was sleeping. He just stood carrying the milk the whole night, just in case, in case his mom wakes up any second, she finds the milk next to her head. And he didn't put it and leave. Look at how much love and care he had to his mom, remembering the days that she gave him all love and care. Mm -hmm. So he stood the whole night, carrying them out for his mom and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released the rock with this great and, and, and awesome deed. Uh, unfortunately I was planning to say more but I don't want to take the time of the games so uh, please uh,